pleased to present today's speaker. We have Yu Fang Zhang, who is a grad student in DCMB. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, actually, the title of today's presentation will be the expert using the large language model for the radiology report. But this is a part of the really like a huge project it's called the Necklace, and it involves a lot of like a background. So I'll just start from like a Necklace and then I'll switch to the main method that I propose and use in this uh in in, in the research. So the Necklace is a uh, project is uh, uh um it is an ab abbreviation for the project of necrotizing and the colitis labeling and uh, computer enhanced diagnosis and uh, today's presentation will be uh, divided into four parts background of the disease and uh, why we wanted to build this system and uh, what it, uh, what is the challenge of building this system and there are two sub aims so the first aim is what are we are going to uh, talk today, and the second one will we'll, we'll be for the future. So, um, um, neck is uh, uh, like the a disease that uh, uh, and a very serious and gastrointestinal disease in premature infants, um, that cause inflammation and the tissue death in the intestine, and the disease can progress really fast. Uh, it's around like seven percent among infants whose birth weight lasts between five hundred and one thousand five hundred grams. So the mortality is alarmingly high, ranging from twenty percent to the thirty percent. So if we can, uh, if if we uh observe the, if we, uh yeah, we can see from the images show here on the left side is the abdominal. Uh, uh yeah, 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 the abdominal X3, and this is the ab uh, abnormal uh structure that the 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 the, uh, the bowel or the intestine is uh full of the air, but so we can see mm -hmm. on the right side the normal AXR, the ab abdominal X3, like uh, it, it's very clear. And the current data we have is actually the text and the, the image pair data. The text is the radiology reports and the images is the abdominal x-ray. And the, in the radiology reports, it has several sections. Uh, the title will be the time of the, um, the, the, the examination performed and the followed by clinical history, comparison, uh, impression, and the routine tests. The things with the, like the, the, uh, the impression section is mainly described what the radiology, uh, radiologist observed in the radiology images. And the, we have the around the 15,000 data points in total. Um, the clinician, we discussed with the clinicians and the, based on their needs, they actually once like the system performs like uh, when the radiology images comes in and the the um the model will immediately uh, flag it as like a um abnormal or a uh, normal. So it's so the system will purely based on the images. But the key problem here for us is that. Uh, we needed the labels extracted from the radiology report, but this is unstructured uh, text. How should we extract the labels from this unstructured um, data? So um, there are main two challenges here. The first one, we, we, we can uh, decompose them into two uh, aspects. The first one is the clinical aspects. So the timely diagnosis is very crucial because, as I mentioned, uh, the, disease, the disease can progress really fast. So any delay in review can postpone necessary treatment and the worsen the patient's condition. In addition, uh, this is highly relied relied on expertise. It's um, so like a, not a, all the general physicians can uh, make conclusions uh, from this like a. From the radiology images, it uh, it requires a, a like very specific domain knowledge, and from the technical aspects, as I put before, the uh, we don't have label. The label is implicitly uh, stated in the impression section in the radiology report. So how should we extract labels from the report? And the second um, technical challenge would be. 
there's no public available abdominal aspirin data set. We, we actually don't have a very large data set. We only have 15,000. We only have 15,000 pairs of images and uh, uh, text. But uh, based on, um, um, I'll talk about the, 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 the other work uh, later. The, on the chest x-ray or other medical images, there are a lot of public data set that they can use. So they can, they will have a really good initialization. They will have a um, pretty much like a, 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 a good understanding of like a, what the uh, normal abdominal x-ray should be. But we don't have such knowledge, knowledge right now. So that will lead to, to our M1. It's, uh, it's called the Human Aspirate Facilitated a Privacy Preserving Large Language Model for Abdominal Assembly Report Labeling. So we'll mainly talk about this part today. So the, after we build the whole system, we, 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 uh, the, um, the, um, on the left side is like how the whole model, the necklace model uh, is built. The first box is what we are going to talk about today. The first box means like we have the radiology reports and we invited human experts to annotate these radiology reports to tell uh, whether there is a neck description in the radiology report or not. And we then extracted the, we, we, we then use it like the annotated data set to train a model. Um, and we use the, the trained model to label the remaining unannotated data set. And then like the, the, second, the second box, what we uh, do next is, is uh, train our image classification model. And that will be uh, uh, mainly used in, this, in the whole clinical support system. Um, so, um, like the, 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 uh, the, um, tremendous research have been mainly focused on the chest x-ray and there are a lot of chest x-ray, like public chest x-ray data sets out there, like a mimic, uh, and, uh, like the chest, like, like a COVID, uh, and the chest x-ray 14, there are like millions of, um, chest x-ray public data sets out there. So benefited from this, um, extensive data set, there are new, uh, numerous and rapidly evolving chest X-ray labeling <laughs> tools developed. But currently, we only have the single facility, uh, single facility abdominal X-ray data set. So we have no available public tools. We don't have enough data sets. So, but we still can learn from like how people build these uh, uh, chest X-ray tools. So let's let's do a quick literature review, like uh, how people in the past uh, to build the chest X-ray related tools. So we can build our own X-ray related tools. So the first one is uh, like uh, in the chest X-ray re report labeling. The first uh, tool they developed is called uh, uh, neck bow or chest bridge. They are uh, solely based on the regular expression on the surface text. And they are very limited when attempting to capture complex syntax constructions, such as like a long noun phrases. So the limitation will be very obvious. Like they, they usually miss the nuanced and the varied language patterns in radiology report. Sometimes the, the description of the certain diseases can be the the observations in the radiology report can be very ambiguous. So the the re, the regular expression they don't have this capability because they are based on the surface text. So though I so they are incapable of to capture such nuanced um expressions. And in addition, they needed to identify the negative uh in the sentence like a no like a no evidence of so it's um so so there were some uh, they were they are uh, very prone to typos and uh, um, uh, ambiguities. So they are, and they are out of date because we can see the paper all published like uh, in 2018 and 19. And the after transformer is um, introduced uh, in this field uh, since 2020 and 21, people uh, can of like switch to the a uh, bird based model uh, like a chest bird or chest bird plus plus. So first they will use the previous rule based labelers to annotate 
the uh, um, the unannotated radiology report and select around the, uh, 1,000 reports and invited some uh, board certificate radiologists to to label them. So like the first one is, is like a, a very um, initial result, like an initial annotation results. So this method kind of like we, we trained the model use very initial low quality annotations and then fine tuned using the uh, the expert curated data set so to improve the model performance. So the improvement will be the first one is that it utilizes the direct report to label mapping from clinicians. Uh, and the second one, it's, it will balance between the rule-based labelers and the manual annotations. Because the manual annotations um, needs a lot of like uh, uh, clinicians' time, clinicians' efforts. So it can reducing costs and the label, but at the same time, maintain a really good uh, model accuracy. And as LL, I'm introduced like a uh, um introduced like a last year. Um, a lot of people are exploring like a whether it can be utilized in this field. But most of the work are using the in contest learning. In contest learning is like we give some examples to the GPT models and uh, give them like a unannotated report and trying and trying to ask them to uh, annotate the the uh, unannotated report based on the several examples we feed into the model. And it should, the, um, the core is to develop a finely crafted prompt that can appropriate, uh, um, describe the whole problem and uh, help the GPT to understand what you really want to do. So for us, it's impossible because um, the GPT is a closed source uh, uh, tools. And uh, if we wanted to use GPT, we needed to send our data um, to OpenAI, and it's, which is a very sen sensitive patient data. It would compromise the patient privacy. So what we should do, like, oh, so this is a performance comparison of all previous uh, methods. And it turns out that uh, the GPT, model, the large language model shows really good model performance compa compared to the the the, um, the very standard one and uh, uh, the BERT-based models. So it shows promise, but we cannot use GPT. So so let's talk about the first, so what is the the task here? So uh, the neck is the air in the intestine, but uh, um, it has uh, three subtypes. The first is called the pneumatosis, is air in the air in the intestine, and uh, the second, where is the mouth? And then the second will be the PVG. It's called a portal uh, venous gas. It means like the air flows along the vein into the liver. And the third one is called a free air. The free air means it's like a full of the uh, abdomen. It's all over. So which means it's the most severe one. We invited the, sorry. We invited the clinicians to annotate the radiology report based on the impression section and give three labels for, for the, the first task whether there's air in the abdomen and the second one is like, it, 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 uh, is it a pneumatosis or PVG or free air? And uh, sometimes because the impression, like I said, like there's a bubbly loosens or something, they cannot tell if it's a stool or if it's a bubble or it's air. So they will label it as uncertain. So there actually, there are three, like a multi-class, multi-class classification problem, positive, negative, uncertain, and the same uh, for the next subtype classification task. And this is the method that uh, uh, we proposed. So we have uh, around uh, 15,000 samples in the data set, and we selected 2,000 and 500 samples and invited three uh, pediatricians who have the domain knowledge to help us to uh, label this data set. Uh, and in addition to this, we um we use the fifth we use the sixteen hundred of them to yeah to uh for the training purposes and the rest of them for the um uh, hyperparameter tuning and the testing. And uh, we designed uh, instruction tuning prompts that uh, that describe the 
um, that that describe this whole task and uh, trained uh, a large language model, Gamma and the Mistral AI model, because they are uh, open source model. It can train and deploy locally. And after we uh, well train this model and achieve really good model performance, then we wanted to um. Because the, there are some problem, also some problem with this type of large large language model. Because large language model is a auto regressive model. It will kind of like encoding the um the internal token to token relationships, and it will somehow uh also really reveal the 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 patient information in some way. And the, the large language model. Uh, requires a lot of computational resources. So that's why we wanted to, um, to do a model distillation to transfer the knowledge in the large language model to the uh, to the BERT model, because um, BERT model is a relatively small model and it can quickly do the inference. So um, this is the whole flow chart and uh, there are two questions we addressed using this uh, framework. The first one is why we use LLM. The because there's no public data set and the LLM in the previous like uh, literary review, we can see it can be considered as a, um, an expert model. In addition, it will reduce human labor costs. And the second one, that why we want to do distillation, the first one is to improve the, the model latency. The latency, because you use LLM, it takes uh, uh, I think I put the numbers uh, in the results section, but like it, it took greatly improve the inference time on the GPU. And the second one is that we can reduce the uh, the cost because the LLM requires a lot of computing resources and also the privacy as I uh, put it before. The BERT only store the weight, but uh, um, but the LLM store like the, also the, um, not only store the weight, but also the, the, the token relationships. So this is the, the prompt that I designed. So uh, the first one that I told that the model, this, this is a, like the, uh, yeah, this is a pediatric radiology report. And, uh, and the input would be the impression section from the radiology report that I showed before. And there are uh, three, uh, there are, Four multiple uh, choices questions. Like the first would be, um, does the child have a um, neck? A yes, B no, C uncertain, and the very similar for the other subtypes. Uh, and for the e, uh, like to to facilitate the downstream um post processing, uh, I ask the the model to 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 give the answer uh, using ABC and in the answer tag so I can easily uh, extract the answers uh, from the out from the output that the LLM generated and uh, evaluated the model performance and the, during the training we know the um we we act, we actually know the uh, label so we um yeah so like in this box so in this box um during the training, we have this box, but it, during the inference, we'll let the LLM to generate the, the answer themselves. So the, there, though these are two like uh, models we use. The, the first one is the gamma model, the second one is Mr. Model. The gamma model, Mr. Model, they all use like a multi-query attention group, attention sliding window attention. These like attention methods will uh, like reduce the, the hyperparameter, the, 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 the parameters trained in the uh, self-attention uh, and also like the uh, like the RMS norm, like a profiling and chunking, they are basically to accelerate the train and the inference time and the reduce the, the computing resources. And the, this is the configuration that I used. Uh, I used the single NVIDIA 840 GPU and I request the 60, 16 gigabytes. Usually the large language model requires a lot of like uh, hundreds of gigabytes. But like the, the reason why I only request 16 gigabytes is because I used the, the uh, method called the QLORA quantized the low rank adaptation methods. And uh, um, these are the hyperparameters that I used uh, uh, for the model training. Uh, I actually made a typo here. The epoch is actually 10 here. So I only used the 10 epochs and <laughs> achieved a really, got a, a really good model performance compared to the baseline. 
And this is the, what is Q Laura? Like the uh, Q Laura is because the, in the original model or like a bird or other model, we will do the full fine tuning because we don't have a lot of like uh, parameters in the models. But for the last language model, it's impossible for our lab to do the full fine tuning. So we use the, the Q LoRa. LoRa is like, uh, so, so, so the LoRa is the combination of quantized model plus LoRa. LoRa is basically introducing the auxiliary matrices uh, that only learn the update of the weight instead of the, the whole weight. Um, and uh, the Q means the quantize. In the original model, they use the floating 16. And uh, currently, they uh, using the Q LoRa, we can first quantize the model into the four bit frozen based model. And we only to we only learn the uh, several adapters during the training, not the whole layers. Okay. And the, these adapters only applied <laughs> to several important layers, like uh, in the self-attention, like there, there are Q, K, the, the query matrices, key matrices, and the value matrices. They, the, the time complexity for these matrices can be like the uh, uh, O, like a big O N square. But if we use the adapter, we can reduce this, the, the like the, time complexity a lot. And uh, uh, during the inference, we will do the like a dequantization. The four bit frozen model is only um, like uh, after we, like uh, when we're doing the computation, we will convert it, this, this quantized model back to the original floating system model. And uh, uh, and we add those, the, the, um, the output from the adapters. And the instruction fine tuning, uh, I, I, I don't think that this is important. So this will be the last uh, proposed uh, component is uh, model distillation. There are three main model distillation paradigm. The first one is called the online uh, distillation. The online distillation, we have the, the, the two models. One is the teacher model, one is the student model. And uh, the model are um, trying to learn the the patterns of the teacher model, but the teacher model uh, are also updating at the same time. So usually the loss dis uh, design here will be the Q, uh, KL divergence. They are trying to match the two distributions. And the second one is called the offline distillation. That, that is what we used. We first well trained a teacher model and use the teacher model to to annotate a distilled data set. And then we use the distilled data set to train a student model. So the teacher model is fixed. It's no longer updated. But the teacher model will train the data and use the data to uh, to tell how the student model uh, should behave. And then the, the third one is the mostly like a, uh, proposed. It's a, a, like called a, like a parametric um, transfer. Uh, yeah, par parametric knowledge transfer, it only applies to the large language. Uh, in, in their paper, they like only apply to a large language model. They have like a lot of like uh, LoRa layers and they are using the SVD to choose uh, which layer is the most important and they only apply those important okay. LoRa layers to the student models like the, so it, so, so that's why it's called the parametric knowledge transfer. So we are going to use the second one because our teacher model achieved really good, good model performance. So we don't need to update the teacher model again. So this is the, yeah, this is the, how the data is split. The, um, yeah, we have the 2,000 and the 500 of the, the manually annotated reports. And uh, we split them into training, uh, testing, and development, and uh, observed uh, these like data distribution, like the, the data distribution table, uh, for the positive cases and the uncertain cases. It's uh, the 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 sample size, the 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 number of these samples are relatively small compared to the negative, um, samples. Uh, in a, and in addition to like so so it's a super uh imbalanced data set and also it's not a very large data set because like in the previous literature people when they are trying to train a bird model they were they will use like a million of data 
point to train the model, but we only have like a thousand of the data. So this is the the uh the result that we are um we are comparing LLMs against the, the fine tune the bird models. Mm -hmm. So the bird model we use are they are pre trained. Uh, um, one is called a clinical bird and the other one called a blue bird. Clinical bird is trained on the pre-trained on the mimic data set. And the bird, blue bird model is pre-trained on the um, PubMed abstract. So, so that can kind of explain why the blue bird model uh, is a slightly is slightly better than the clinical uh, bird model because like uh, the mimic three data sets are the patients like they are aged uh, over eighteen. But uh, the blue uh, so 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 like we are basically focusing on the neck patients uh, who are premature infants. Uh, so that's why it, it it doesn't perform really well because they are not. Too many like a relative knowledge in the um in in, in the pre-trained model and the but these these two bird based model they doesn't perform good because the the F one score for the positive and uncertain is about a point twenty six uh, and a point thirty eight but if we use gamma two billion uh or gamma seven billion uh Mr seven billion model the model performance is actually. Uh, really high, like for the neck positive cases, the F1 score can uh, can be up to 0 0.9, and for the uncertain cases, it can be up to 0 0.70, 78. And we do the uh, we 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 run the experiment three times, and the standard deviation is relatively uh small. Um, yeah, so that is the how the LM performs against the bird models, and. Uh, and the, this time we are focusing on the gamma 2B and the gamma 7B models. Uh, the we can conclude from like a gamma 2B again and uh, oh and the, the the ratio here means on uh, how many like uh, um the, the proportion of the training data sets that we used uh, during the fine tuning process. So point two mean, means here, here we use only 20% of the training data set to fine tune the data. So we have the uh, uh, 1600, so like a point two, which means we only utilize around 300 uh, training samples. So from the gamma set, uh, gamma two, a uh, billion, we can see the the model performance is actually um a, what well when the training uh when the fine tuning size increases the model performance is uh, is actually uh increased uh as well and the, so the story are the same for the gamma seven billion and the mr seven billion so we'll, we will not talk about uh, Mr. 7 billion here because the Mr. 7 billion model doesn't perform like a very stable uh, and the standard deviation is really high. So we are focused on the gamma 2B and the gamma 7B. And the, compared to the gamma 2B and the gamma 7B, uh, no matter what the fine tuning ratio is, the model performance, the gamma 7 billion model performance is still, is consistently uh, better than the gamma 2B uh, model. So we can conclude that uh, a uh, larger model uh, has better capability here. And the 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 second the 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 second solution will be like when we increase in fine tuning size size, the model performance actually uh increase. So that is not very surprising because like we have like a more data to train the model and the model can um, better model the relationship between the input and the, the output. But we actually observe there is a jump um, when we increase the, the fine tuning data sets from 20% to 40%. Uh, I, I, I initially thought that would be like uh, something they will, they, they say like a emergent uh, ability, but like emergent ability is only talking about like uh, when the model size is increases to certain, uh, when the model like increases to some certain size, and uh, a lot of like, uh, uh, they can solve a lot of complex tasks they can never solve before. But I'm not so sure about if this is uh, also works for the fine tuning data sets. But I'm I uh, but this is like a 
I only did the empirical experiments, so I didn't study the theory behind it. So it's just an observation, like uh, as the uh, fine tuning data set increases, model increases, the model performance increases, and then also the um that there's a jump here for the gamma 2D model, but for the gamma 7 billion model, because the gamma 7 billion model is a relatively large model, it has already a lot of knowledge pre-trained. So therefore, even the model, uh, even the, the fine tuning size of 0.2, the model performance rem remains uh, relatively high for the positive and the uh, uncertain. So the, the next the conclusion would be smaller model benefited more from the larger data set. And the last one is that uh, for the PVG and the free air, because they are they are they only have like just a, like a, a like a four to five samples in the data set. So even for the gamma seven billion model, um, they they needed to have like a full fine tuning data set to achieve like a point nine or point eight model uh point eight F one score. Um, point two is not enough for for them to perform to yeah to perform well and the last one is that uh, like uh, how the distill model um uh, works because in the previous the bird model only the, no matter um is the clinical bird or blue bird model uh, the f1 score for the neck or pneumatosis is very low and then we wanted to know like if we use llm to teach the bird model whether it can perform uh better compared to its baselines. So we can see like the, we, after we do, we, we, we did the model distillation, um, gamma 2B, 7B, Mr. 7B, they all like uh, increase, no matter what a teacher model they use, the model performance all increased. And it can be, comp like it, it's on par with the, uh, the LLM, the teacher model itself. So we have the like a two conclusion that the distill distill the model can achieve comparable model performance mm -hmm. to LLM teacher and the better teacher model results in better student model like the gamma seven B is doing better than the gamma two B as a teacher model. So the takeaway message for uh, LL, LLM in the abdominal S three uh, classification is that. Uh, the first one is the different LLM shows varying capability in labeling abdominal S3 reports. And, and the large models consistently are performing smaller ones. And the second one is that increasing the size of the fine tuning data set significantly boosts model performance, particularly for smaller models and the classes with limited examples. And the third one is that using LLM as a teacher model can substantially improve the performance of the bird model, making it comparable to LLMs. So that will conclude the all the previous results and there are future like discussions of the ethics so like I, I I said like why we choose the gamma and the mystery model instead of GPT model because the gamma and the mystery model they can be run locally preventing sensitive data leakage and just do the models uh can be easily fine-tuned and transmitted because it's only store the weight and the limitation is that like, we simplify the model into classification problem. So this is what a clinicians request because they wanted to, the images come in and then the label comes out. But we like, uh, uh, there are a lot of people out there that are doing like a report a summary, report a generation. So that will probably be the future of this project because like we will never know like what a clinician will want in the future. And in addition, this is the retrospective data and, uh, and only from a single facility. So that will introduce the bias uh, into the model. The model may not generalize very well to other data sets. So now we are collaborating with the NAC society and the, the hospitals and trying to get more data. And, the, to, and to address the previous limitations, we will probably like improve model interpretability to, for example, introduce clinicians in the loop to improve the, like uh, the, the model, like we all know, like when we interact with GPT, it will like give you explanations uh, alongside with the, 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 the answers. So probably we can improve the reasoning abilities using the uh, like a uh, direct op optimization 
uh, direct preference op optimization. And also uh, for the multi-center medical data, because we have a lot of like, collaborations and we are not very sure if they wanted to send the data uh, to us. So probably we can use like a federated warning to preserve their local uh, privacy uh, in this uh, process. Yeah, I think that will be all I wanted to talk about today because the rest of them are the image parts. So it, it's probably irrelevant to the topic. Uh, yeah. So is there any other questions about this? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, interesting talk. So, um, so I see that uh, your comparisons are for different LLMs and different language-based models, right? So then, then different languages. Like you compare different models, uh, different parameters, and stuff like that. So, uh, even though we are uh, comparing these, there are uh, there will definitely be uh, mislabeled cases and other other things. Right? So, were you able to compare it with the actual uh, label data from the instance and how how well did all of these language models perform compared to the things? This is the results compared to the clinicians, actually. Okay. Yeah, because we split the data into the, the training, validation, and the testing. And the, the results I report here is the, the model performance on the testing data set. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, I have a follow-up. Follow so uh, these, uh, are there any other metrics other than the uh, pretext report from the radiology that, are, the, that can be used to generate the data? Uh, are you talking about the, like oh, what else input? Yeah. Um, currently only the radiology reported that. Uh, uh, the actually the impression section, like the gas extending to the rectum, the only this section is used uh, during the training, and uh, the average token uh number is around the two hundred and fifty. <laughs> 